Hi there, Alison here with another Cap Franc du Jour. Today we are in Sommer Champigny. We're looking at the Domaine des Roches Neuves 2019 Terre Chaude, Sommer Champigny. Thierry Jemaine is the sixth generation in a long lineage of vineyard from Bordeaux, and he came to the Loire Valley in 1991 when he purchased the existing estate, Domaine des Roches Neuves. Thierry and I recently had a chance to speak over Zoom, and he was kind enough to not only listen to my very rusty French for 45 minutes, he also uh, shared some great details with regards to his approach to viticulture as well as winemaking uh, when it comes to Cabernet Franc. And over the course of this video, as well as future videos with other wines from Domaine de Rocheneuve, I'll kind of unpack bits of our conversation and some of the key concepts. First and foremost, when it comes to viticulture, uh, Thierry is a staunch proponent of biodynamics. He began converting his vineyards to biodynamic viticulture in 1998. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about here, but today I'm going to focus on his approach to canopy management. So he does not do any sort of leaf pulling, leaf plucking, or hedging of his canopy. Rather, he's uh, installed an additional top wire to his trellis, and he takes the shoots from the canopy and kind of wraps them over and around this top wire to better expose the bunches to sunshine. Now, he's observed in his vineyards uh, the way the leaves sort of move and, and sort of rotate uh, as the sun sort of moves throughout the day. And rather than uh, removing these leaves and letting the sun sort of influence the ripening directly, he uses these leaves as essentially a vehicle for photosynthesis and aids the ripening in this way. Today's wine is coming from a commune called Chasse. Uh, now there are nine communes in Sommer Champigny and there are six that are dotted along the Loire River that kind of hug the Loire River. And then there are three that are set back a little bit. So where we are here in Chasse, we're about five kilometers away from the Loire River. So there's less of an influence from the Loire. And also, uh, in this part of Sommer Champigny, we tend to see a few more uh, south-facing slopes rather than sort of flat vineyards. Uh, today's wine is coming from a single lieu dit called Les Poilleux. And if this sounds familiar to uh, you wine professionals out there, you are not mistaken. It is the same Les Poilleux of Clos Rougeard. Uh, but this is not a, a very uh, easy vineyard to kind of unpack. Uh, it's not a, a simple expression that, that one can talk about like sort of uh, across the board. Uh, it's actually quite a large vineyard from my research and I'm not quite sure exactly how many hectares it is but I think it's up around 30 hectares in total and why we do have the uh, Tyronean Tufo chalky bedrock the uh, topsoil of this vineyard is by no means homogeneous so depending on where your parcels are uh, you will have a different influence in terms of the topsoil now uh, where Thierry's vines are he has one hectare here and uh, they're in the western part of Les Poilleux uh, he has more of a southwest facing exposure as opposed to directly south so he gets a little bit more intensity in terms of the afternoon sunshine and then uh, on his slope uh, the topsoil is sort of a mix of clay and sand uh, and it sort of ranges in depth from 30 to about 80 centimeters depending on where you are on the slope so uh, not a huge depth in terms of the overall topsoil here uh, his vines are around 35 to 45 years of age uh, and in the cellar um, in terms of winemaking uh, Terry really lets the, um, uh, the soil of the vineyard kind of dictate his approach to um, picking the vessel for fermentation as well as aging. Uh, he really believes that the energy of the soil kind of gives an energy to the wine and, and that needs to kind of match the vessel in terms of the shape of, and the size of the vessel. So in the case of this wine, this was aged in uh, round food, quite large food. So we have 6,000 liter as well as 1,200 liter uh, oak food. And he believes this sort of clay kind of needs like this rounder vessel to kind of match it uh, energy wise as opposed to something that say is more uh, sort of oval shaped or, or a smaller vessel per se. Now on the nose uh, this has a really beautiful fruit profile. It's got this like it's it's got this density of fruit and a nice mix of uh, fruit basket. There's like uh, a bit of blueberry here, there's some cassis, there's some cherry, there's some uh, raspberry, but it definitely is more sort of fruit forward as opposed to like savory or herbaceous. The pyrazines are dialed way, way back, but they are there. Uh, and it comes through for me as like sort of a cedar note, maybe even a touch of like a, a fresh turned potting soil or something like that. And then there's this wonderful flower kind of floral element to this wine that is not violets. It's more like a peony kind of note, which could be the season because uh, it's June, uh, but by the same token, well, it's almost June, I should say, uh, but it is kind of a very distinctive sort of floral undertone. On the palate, a really um, lively, um, energetic acidity here. 
the tannins are very fine, quite firm, and they fill them out. There, there is a lot of tan in here, um, and they have a wonderful kind of velvety texture with a nice kind of chalky finish as well. Fruits come through really beautifully on the palette, um, but there isn't, you kind of think that this is gonna have like this densely packed fruit um, profile to it, um, and the heaviness, but it doesn't. There's this wonderful levity to this wine and, and beautiful finesse here as well. There's a great spicy element to this wine too, kind of coming through as like a pink peppercorn, maybe even black peppercorn, touch of clove as well. There's a lot of layers here. There's a definite approachability to this wine and a sort of a generosity to this wine in its current sort of state of evolution. But you can also sense that this is somewhere really cool to go uh, and maybe sort of starting in about three years time and kind of going forward from there. But there's a lot of layers and a lot of depth to this wine. It also has this sort of soulful energy. It has this sort of inviting kind of warm kind of persona to it. It's reminiscent of that um, best friend that you have that maybe you don't see very often, but when you do, you like pick right back up and you get into those really deep, thoughtful conversations with this person. Um, but this is kind of how this this energy of this wine is sort of uh, coming at me today. It's very familiar, very warm, very inviting, um, but it's just, it's just all of Terry's wines are absolutely fantastic. If you've not had them before, I highly recommend seeking them out. They are some of the most profound examples of Cabernet Franc from Sommer Champigny out there. Um, if you've had them before, by all means, please let me know what you thought of them in the comments below. And of course, as always, I will be back again soon with another wine. Cheers.